Well, hi everyone. Happy Saturday to you. This is my very first Saturday show. So I hope it works out that maybe a few more people can join because summer's over. Um, it's actually a balmy 70 something here this morning in Florida. I went to the beach and let me tell you, it was a little bit chilly. Um, you can tell I've lived here for a little while. So uh, yeah, I guess it's kind of like fall and uh, I figure Saturdays might be a better time um, when I can kind of reach more people, especially the people in LA, you know, I'm, I'm doing it three o'clock on Fridays. Uh, not a lot of people can, if they actually have a job and they have to work, can't come and hang out with me and uh, my guests. So I hope that this works out and um, you know, if you uh, are new around here, you know, I definitely would like you to type new in the comments. I love meeting new people. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Dawn Wolf, and I am an animal talent agent. And this is my show called Positively Famous Live. And I started it over the summer during, you know, the, the quarantine and everybody's like locked down. And, uh, you know, did a bunch of shows uh, interviewing people. And then I guess the last month or so, I've kind of just been doing a Friday fun show and introducing a bunch of my community members. So if you're not a member of our community, uh, after the show, jump in and, and request to join. Um, and so in just a minute, I'm going to bring on a very cool guest for you guys. So I know a lot of people contact me because their dog is super cute and they're like, oh, my dog should be a model because maybe the dog doesn't actually um, have enough skills sometimes to be an actor, but modeling, uh, a lot of people, I guess that's a little bit more on their radar. So I have America's uh, top dog model for 2020 here, and I'm gonna introduce you to her and her owner in just a minute. But let me just look in into the chat here and see who might be here. Uh, well, hi, Jean. Good to see you. And Moo is here and Les and Alanka. And we got, well, hi, Rachel. Um, you're new from L.A. Welcome. And oh, Leslie. Hi, Leslie Riddle. How are you? Um, so 67 in New York City. <laughs> yes. Summer is over, people. Um, but, you know, it's funny that they call where I live here in Florida endless summer and it kind of is. But, you know, I still um, I still get a little bit chilly when it's a little bit windy out and stuff like that. You guys should have heard me when I had to live in Fairbanks, Alaska and North Pole, Alaska for a few years. I did a lot of complaining. I did not like 50 below. So so even though it's a little breezy down here, uh, you know, um, it's amazing. I just love it. So, well, hi, Sam. Glad you could join us. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring uh, her in here in just a minute. And well, hi, Carolyn. And what I'm going to do, so I'm going to uh, bring Terry on. And then at the end of the show, we're going to do like a question and answer session. So, you know, while we go along, if you guys have any questions that you want me to ask her, just kind of put them in the comments and I'll go back through and, and we can get all of your questions answered. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring Terry on. I'm so excited to talk with, with her. And let me get rid of that. Okay. All right. So here we go. Hi, Terry. Hi. Hi, Don. Thank you for having us today. Well, I'm so excited that you had some time and, and were available to come and do this. Um, so the people that don't maybe know who you are, because we just see, you know, your beautiful shy all the time. Uh, so you're is uh, Terry Moshe. And um, where, where are you living at these days? Like you're in L.A. area approximately? Uh-huh. In Rancho Cucamonga. It's about 45 minutes from L.A. That's that's very convenient if you want to have a star dog, right? A famous dog is to live right right there in the heart of LA. Have you lived there for a long time? Oh, about twenty years now. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that you know Shy just won America's Top Dog Model here in July. So exciting! Congratulations on that. And uh, we're going to bring Shy on in just a minute, but. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how did you end up getting a Afghan hound um, as, as, you know, I know that, um, you know, it's a very cool breed. I've wanted one since I was a kid. I do not have one yet. Um, I really want those and I really want a Russian wolfhound too. Those are like my two big favorite elegant looking dogs that I've wanted forever. But um, did you, did you have these dogs growing up or what kind of dogs did you grow up with? Um, actually, um, when I was young, I was very allergic to animals. 
Ooh. So yeah, so I had lizards and fish and that kind of thing. So after I became like 13 or 14 years old, I stopped my allergy shots and I said, I've got to have animals. So we started with cats. And um, <laughs> when I um, graduated from, from college, I decided I was going to get a dog. So I got a, um, a German Shepherd. That was my first one, um, uh, Bear. And he was amazing. She was amazing. Um, but um, I always had a dream of having Afghans. So um, did you meet one sometime or did you see one on a TV show? Like, how did this dream even happen? I mean, I met some when I was a kid, when I was seven, these people down the street had had like five of them um, and they were just gorgeous. So I used to go like try to hang out with them and beg them to let me walk them, but they wouldn't. I was like too little. And so but how did you want it? Why did you want Afghan? Well, when I was in college, my first degree was in, um, uh, it was in veterinary technology. And so we learned about all the dog breeds and I just was fascinated with Afghans just because that their personalities are like cats and they're a little bit different. And um, so I kept it in mind. And when I did look for my first dog, I couldn't find any Afghans. So the next best one was a German Shepherd for me. Uh, but now being in Southern California, um, I had a little more access to people who might have Afghans. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, they, they definitely, um, have a different personality. Uh, the Afghans, you know, they're not like a German shepherd, which is like bred to be obedient. Right. So, right. so they were like miles apart. So I find that really interesting. And, um, okay. So, so tell us how you ended up getting, um, cause, cause she's your second Afghan. I, I right. met you years ago when you had your other Afghan. So let's, let's go back and talk about how you ended up with him. Oh, this is a funny story. So like I said, I always wanted an Afghan and, um, my sister-in-law, she went to one of her doctors and she happened to see Afghans on the walls, you know, uh, beautiful pictures. And so she asked her doctor and the doctor knew a breeder in my area. And so um, it was history. I went to visit her and they had one male, I mean, one, um, yeah, one male and um, it was a dar and I fell in love with him. And that was, that was it. And it was really amazing because the breeder um, actually would, I called her my grand, her, his grand, his grandmother, because I would take him to her and then she taught me all the different, like the different um, stages because Afghans go through different stages of um, their hair and their personality. And it really helped a lot. Yes. They are a very, very high maintenance dog. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's real. And I, you know, I think a lot of times when you end up getting a breed that, you know, you're not familiar with, I think it's wonderful when breeders kind of take you under their wing and, and people like teach you about the breed. I think that's really important. Um, and it seems like, you know, in the day of the internet, that that would be an easier thing to do. Uh, but it, kind of seems like it's kind of like a lost thing. I just remember, you know, more like 30 years ago that people would really encourage that stuff. I guess maybe we got a little bit busier now. But anyways, if you're a breeder, I encourage you to take people under your wing and teach them about your breed. Uh, I think it's uh, an important thing. So, all right. So, uh, he was gorgeous. He was such a gorgeous Afghan hound. So um, you got Adar and then tell me some of the fun things, tell everybody like some of the fun things that you started doing with him. Cause I'm sure walking down uh, the street with that dog in Los Angeles, I'm sure you couldn't go anywhere. I mean, he was just stunning. Oh, definitely. Well, actually what happened was, is he was about eight months old and we were at a dog event and a photographer followed us. And it turned out that he was a famous photographer and wanted wanted her, I mean him, in her uh, his book. And so uh, we did that. And he said that Adar had so much potential, and I should follow up on it. So I just took him through all kinds of, uh, uh, from puppy to advanced training. And um, we were lucky enough to hook up with some amazing agents. And so next thing you know, he was doing TV and movies and commercials and everything. 
Okay, well, you can't just gloss over that. Okay? <laughs> you're like, you're going right through it, Terry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Name, name a couple cool things that he did specifically, because, you know, I mean, maybe we can go back and, and see some of them as well. So what, um, was, what was his first job? How about that? What was your first job where you're like on set? And what was that like for you? Because, um, you know, you're not a professional dog trainer, um, but you ended up getting some some education more about being a dog trainer though right because of him oh definitely yes and I, I worked with quite a few dog trainers and now i'm pretty good on set so i'm what do you call it, like a pseudo dog trainer <laughs> um yeah um, you know honestly i can't remember his first job because it just kind of everything went fast <laughs> but, i know um, but we we actually were in a movie with um with um uh, james franco and seth rogan Wow. Yeah. I love them both. Yeah. Called the disaster artist. And okay. that was amazing. It was a really amazing. They were so sweet and very professional and, and Adar had a great time. Um, we also did a shoot. Well, hold on. What, what did Adar have to do in the movie? Oh, okay. He basically walked down the street with a model. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, walking down a busy street, you know, like, on Beverly Boulevard with all the cars and everything, you know, it can be a distraction. Oh, know. absolutely. Well, anytime a dog has to walk away from its owner or its trainer, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, you have to kind of really make that look real. Like it's really their dog. And sometimes that can absolutely be a bit difficult. Yeah, so. definitely. Because usually the, the models or the actresses that we work with don't have any you know, experience working with animals. Actually, Shay's back here. <laughs> she says, Where, let me come she up. She says, wait, what about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, basically I have to, I have to introduce, you know, my dog to the model or the uh, actress. And usually it's, I have to go up to them and say, hey, do you want to take a couple minutes and introduce yourselves? Because usually they just expect me to just hand the dog over and just do it. <laughs> and, yeah. And you know what I mean? If the, if the, you know, the person who's working with the dog is afraid or doesn't have any experience, then I have to give them little clues on, you know, on how to make work, you know, how to hold a leash about that leash. first step, right? <laughs> Definitely. And not to be afraid of the dog. I mean, both my dogs were very, you know, mellow and easygoing. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so so that's cool. So tell, tell us a couple other things that you did with him. Um, one of the bigger things we did before um, he passed away was uh, a Snoop Dogg commercial with a few other friends and their Afghans, and that was pretty amazing. That took, uh, that was like a 10 day practice shoot. And um, we just, we had a room together in LA and there were four of us um, that, that stayed, well actually it was three of us that stayed with us and there were four dogs and one other Afghan. So that was pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, can't hear you. I, I mute my, my mic. Sometimes. Okay. So I was saying I love Snoop Dogg mm -hmm. um, and I totally would love to hang out with him. So how did, did he like the dogs? Was he loving up on the dogs or did he, you know, he just kind of just did his thing or. Um, actually we weren't, we weren't allowed on set. So we would drop the dogs off with the trainer in the morning and then we get the dogs at night. So we didn't even know really Aww. what it was that they were practicing for. <laughs> Which was, it was a big secret, huh? It was a big secret because it was Snoop. Um, but um, afterwards we found out and I went to a book signing of his um, over at the Grove and I brought Adar and he recognized him immediately and they just, they bonded. It was really nice. It was really Aww. nice. And he is a big dog lover, definitely. That's right. Yeah, he seems like a totally cool guy. Yeah. So. Well, awesome. Um, okay, so um, let's introduce your, your beautiful girl here. And uh, let's see if she can get up and say hi to us. Come on, baby girl. Come on up. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Get your face over there, little girl. Hey, girl. There we go. <laughs> She's been playing outside with the uh, with the squirrels today. So, oh, <laughs> is she a hunter? <laughs> She's oh, so pretty. Thank you. 
<laughs> Look at her. she loves her mom. She loves her mom. Aww. What a sweetie. So, so your dogs are also service dogs, right? I mean, that's, uh, and, and, you know, knowing you, so you ended up getting your first one for a service dog, which mm -hmm. I find super interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. So what, so what kind of things, um, did you expect from an Afghan hound to do as a service dog? Is it more just kind of being there with you with, the, or, um, do they have any special tasks? Um, yeah. Other so, than looking fabulous. Oh yes. Well, I had a stroke, so I needed a dog that was tall enough who could be my support. So if I wasn't feeling good or I was a little bit off balance, then I could rely on them. So I had that, and also I get I tend to be hypoglycemic, and sometimes I forget to eat if I'm busy, and so if I seem like I'm getting tired, then um, then they go ahead and they make me stop whatever I'm doing and and go ahead and eat something. Well, that's a very good idea to have a dog like that to remind you if you have those kind of things. And yeah, I mean, she's definitely tall enough to like stabilize you should you get a little bit off balance. So that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, uh, so, okay. So how old was she? How did you end up getting her? I mean, she's just fabulous looking. I just love her whole, her whole look. Yeah, let me let her, let me put her down so she can talk a little bit. Um, this is a really interesting story. So Adar, my other um, Afghan, passed away, and a couple of weeks later, I I was devastated. I wouldn't leave the house. I mean, he was like my best friend, and so a couple of friends of mine tried to find because we because I belong to um, Afghan Rescue Group in Southern California, and they're amazing, but they didn't have any young dogs at the time. And so a couple of my friends found her online on Facebook in Canada. And so uh, they arranged it with the, uh, with the breeder. And one day I got a call on a Saturday saying, hey, guess what, you're getting a dog. And, it, and I saw a picture of her and I just, I fell in love right there. So it was pretty amazing. So it's kind of like people that adopt a baby, like you get the call and you're like, hey, we have a puppy for you, mm -hmm. right? Right. And she was eight months old. So it was a good, good time to, you know, she was a good training mode. And her original name was um, Polo City Winds Bellamia. <laughs> so, <laughs> but she means a uh, gift in Hebrew. And she was definitely a gift. So that's why I changed it to that. Um, her original breeder was really amazing. She just gave her so much love and uh, just continues on today. So I can never say thank you enough to her too. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Well, let me let me show uh, one of her pictures of her first job here. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was eight months old, and and at that time I realized that that she was destined for you know for for all the uh, you know entertainment industry things because she really loved that shoot. Yeah, well, you definitely want a dog that enjoys it. And, uh, you know, she, you can see in the eyes there, she has that little something extra. So mm -hmm. very, very expressive. Um, so tell me a little bit like um, how I know that these dogs take a lot of uh, maintenance, but okay. So let's say I were to call you, Terry, and say, I have a gig for you in LA on what's today, Saturday. I have a job for you on Monday. Mm hmm. Could you get her ready to look like gorgeous or do you need like two or three days notice with a dog like this? Like, um, it depends on my, um, my <clears throat> groomers. I have one groomer that's more of a, um, a like a, you know, like a, a ready, you know, regular, you know, groomer. Then I mm -hmm. have another groomer who's like, she does her own thing. So usually she's a little bit more available. But it would be nice to have at least like, you know, three or four days notice so that way I can get her ready because I like to get a groom the day before so that way she can she can relax and, you know, be ready sure. for her to stay. Yeah, they, they take a lot of grooming, these dogs. So all yeah. right, well, let, let's go through a few of the photos and I want you to tell us about them as I go through. Sure. <laughs> she's so Look at her face. That's her, one of her backyard photos. Yeah, she's just, she's such a happy girl. She pretends like she's hiding and I can't <laughs> see her, but obviously we can. <laughs> um, that was a really nice shoot. Um, her name was, uh, her name is Natalie Butes and 
Um, she's an amazing photographer and we got together in a, in a little area near me and we just did it for fun and some- I'd love her things. face there. And there you are together. Yeah, that was just there. And um, that was a really cool shoot. Yeah, and that one too. Wow. Yeah, actually that shoot was from a, um, a photographer in uh, England and he came out here looking to, to do an interesting shoot and it was just amazing. And the other dog, Tara, she's, she's really beautiful. She just passed away recently, unfortunately. Aww. But she's, she's done a lot of shoots with us also and she's another pro. She got a whole Afghan uh, crew out there that like, we need Afghans and, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few Afghan friends who um, who model and do um, you know, different things also. So if they need more than one, we have a crew that we can we can ask, which is nice. And this is an LA paper. Yeah, it's a shout out. Um, it's a magazine, and what this was really cool because um, I was able to give credit to all the people who have helped us over the years. You know the nice. the agents and the photographers and and I choose one person and then I tell them about them and then they go ahead and have them shout out also. So oh. I kind of give credit to people who help us because I think that's how you get ahead in life. Hey, uh, I'm a big believer that, you know, it takes, uh, you know, a lot of support for from all of us to kind of get where, you know, I always tell my trainers, it's a team, you know, I don't work unless you work, you know what I mean? So that's just the nature of the business. And, you know, especially here during COVID, um, I'm very thankful myself for all of the support that friends and family and everybody has been giving me through this time. How are you doing with COVID out there? Are you, mm -hmm. let's talk about that a little bit before uh, we go on with this. Sure. Let's see. So how's everything out in LA where you live with COVID? What's going on out there? Uh, everything's is starting to open up, but um, there was a lot of issues as far as COVID and testing before you do a shoot. So <laughs> I'm um, going through that nightmare right now. Okay. Yeah. So um, we had a shoot that we were, we were getting ready to do um, a friend of mine and I and her actually was um, with Tara and my friend and I both got our COVID testing. And then we had to wait for the results and we were trying to, we were trying to plan it. It had to be like within a week or so of the shoot. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, is that we didn't get our results back in time. So we couldn't be on set with the dogs, but you know, that's kind of hard. Um, I think they're getting a little bit better about it because they have a rapid test now. Um, but that is a big concern. It, it, it absolutely is. Um, let's, let's just, uh, I want to tell people a little bit about um, kind of what is going on in COVID. If you're going to work in this is that <clears throat> I actually had a trainer on set last Monday and she got there at nine o'clock and they had said the week before, you know, they're just going to follow all the protocols. Well, they, she got there at nine o'clock in the morning instead of 1030, her call time. And uh, they were like, look, we're going to have to take you in an Uber to go get a rapid test up in New York City. So she, they pushed the call time till noon anyway. So she made it. But um, I'm kind of going through the same thing right now because I have another possible shoot coming up here next week. And, you know, they just really don't have it together on the testing to kind of get it quickly. And then my trainers are telling me that there's a lot of false positive with the um, rapid tests, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could go get tested and you don't have it and it comes back positive, you know what I mean? So it's just this whole nightmare. So it's just so crazy. We live in the United States and we cannot get it together. Mm -hmm. How many months into COVID now? Oh, gosh. Right? So beware of that. If you guys are thinking about going on set uh, and you get booked for a job through anybody, make sure that you find out what the COVID protocols are and get tested and also find out where they have rapid testing in your community uh, because you might be able to have the production company or somebody go ahead and pay for you to do a rapid test, whether it's you know really a good idea or not as far as the accuracy. But those are things to know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm fun times, people. Yeah, I'm actually a retired um, clinical lab scientist, so I used to run those tests, so I know too. <laughs> yeah, so I've experience with that. Wow, you, you've done a lot of interesting things, lady. All right, so let's let's go back here and uh, show some more pictures here. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that was our Valentine shoot. Um, actually, that's the lady who helped us with America's Top Dog model picture. Her name is um, Kim Saxelberry. 
and she's just amazing. She has her own studio and locally, and Shay just loves her. Aw. Mm -hmm. So Voyage LA, oh, nice. So they actually were part of the Shout Out LA. So we did, you can see that she's a little bit younger there. So we did that shoot at that first. And they just asked us questions about how we got started and what did she do and that kind of thing. So very pretty. Now, oh, what's this? Oh, uh, this was a really is amazing shoot. So um, that's Amanda Vanderpool, and she's um, like an entrepreneur. She does uh, her, her own show. Um, so we did like a little pilot thing with her, and um, it was just amazing. Their colors of of their outfit you know, the outfits and her and Shay just matched perfectly. It was just really beautiful shoot. And Amanda's very sweet. Yeah, that is just a gorgeous picture of them. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, let's see here. I got a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I love, I love all that kind of stuff. Uh, oh yeah. Here's another really great one. Yeah. You can see how our jacket matches Shay perfectly. <laughs> And that was really cool. That was Boohoo Fashions. And so we did commercials with them. And uh, Shea was amazing. It was through um, All Animals um, Agency. And they were really sweet. Uh, Gloria, the one who owns the company, was just a sweetheart. And Oh, yeah. Awesome. I know Gloria. I've, I've, we've done stuff together and stuff like that. She's a wonderful person. I love Gloria. She is. And, and, and is uh, she off leash there? Or we just see the uh, leash kind of held down at the side. We can't see it. Yeah, you can't see it. Yeah, because okay. right. it was like that was open to this kind of like to the street area. There were um, yeah, beautiful mansion, and there were horses out there too. So <laughs> we didn't want to take a well, chance going after the horses. Afghans off leash, you know, they're just they're not a German Shepherd. Let's just say that. Right. I mean, they could just see a piece of paper or whatever, <laughs> and they'll go for it. Something um, white goes by, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, a little yeah, piece they're of definitely, dog. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are sight hounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a pretty one of you guys. I yeah. like that. <laughs> and oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that was really cool. So what we do sometimes is there's a few um, like modeling agencies and they ask us, you know, they ask for Shay and we do shoots with their models. So. Fine. Oh, there's another one from that. Yeah. And that was just a, like a, just a quick, you know, it, it wasn't planned, but she just, she loves models and she's, she just, you know, she's a love. <laughs> Cute. That is gorgeous. I love the way that picture turned out. Yeah, that came out amazing. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, that's like a Disney, uh, re, re, you know, reincarnation of Shay. <laughs> And that's pretty our, good at wearing stuff on her head, huh? Yeah, I mean, she loves to dress up. And that was our last shoot we just did last week, which was amazing. So what was that for? That was one of the um, the modeling groups. And um, they wanted her to be part of it. And it was like a gangster type shoot. So it okay. was pretty cute. You ever get involved with the 48-hour film festival out there? Um, no. Well, this was in San Diego. So, um, no, I haven't. That's really cute looking. I like that. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She just loves dressing up. That's Not beautiful. Dressing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to show her. Um... And that's just at home, relaxing. <laughs> Even at home, she still looks like a model. She's so elegant. <laughs> yeah. And there she is with America's Top Dog Model. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that. Um, so how did that, how did that come about? Um, I'm somewhat familiar with the organization and the contest, but can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Sure. So my other dog, Adar, um, we did a, um, a, did the contest for that also, and it was called, um, meet the politician. So it was actually, you know, when they were voting again and she, and he came out as uh, one of the finalists. So that was cool. So I decided with Shay, I wanted to give her a chance because each dog will get one chance to be on this. So um, they, the topic was fairy tales and we love fairy tales and anything like that. 
And so her, um, she, she was a big, um, red, uh, big red riding hood. That was the thing. And so what I did was um, Ken Soxelby and I, um, we went up to an area where there was kind of woodsy and we took pictures and then she um, photo edited. It was amazing. And I had to write a little um, a blurb, like a little story about um, Shay as um, Big Red Riding Hood. And so it's not only the picture, but it's also the story that they look at. And they just loved it. I know, Shay Shay. And so um, we won. It was pretty amazing. And we're really excited. Well, congratulations on winning that. I mean, she's just a, a gorgeous girl. So um, it's the end of 2020 now. And, you know, things are, again, starting to open up. Is there anything um, on the horizon for you guys? What's what's going on for the rest of the year? Or is it still unknown? Um, it's still COVID time, you know. Um, things are starting to open up. I mean, I hear the entertainment industry, like I said, you know, with the COVID testing is getting a little better. Um, we never know because we get calls from our agents all the time. It's just the drop of the hat. And so we never know what's going to happen. So we just kind of keep it open and, you know, sky's the limit. We'll see what happens this year, the end of the year or even next year. Yeah, well, she, she's a gorgeous dog. I hope to be able to put you guys uh, to work here soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on and, and uh, hanging out for a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to bring on a couple of comments here. So let me just, my friend Jean here. What? So she says they are very high maintenance. Uh, it's also, what can I do for you, Brie? But what is it in for me type breed? And I can't read. <laughs> yeah, I can read, but I don't understand. Um, they, uh, they are high maintenance. Um, they're uh, very sensitive dogs too. And I brush her multiple times a day. And then she gets groomed like three to four weeks, every three to four weeks. So if that helps a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure you have to spend a lot of time. I mean, I just got this little Maltese and uh, yeah, she requires so much more grooming than little Jack Russell's for sure. Um, but uh, I love her. I've always wanted a little Fifi dog. So, but someday I really am going to have an Afghan hound. Yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely a dream of mine. Um, so how when you travel with her, like, do you have like a big SUV or do you have a little car you just like load her in? Like, how do you, how do you transport something like her? Um, well, actually before COVID, I used to take the train and like the Metrolink. Sure. So, so we would take the Metrolink together and go to the shoots and it was really made it a lot easier. Didn't have to worry about parking, you know, and I just carry a bag and the bag has like a hair dryer in case, you know, she gets wet, has all kinds of brushes, all kinds of snacks, um, all kinds of, I bring a million leashes and collars because you never know on set which one they want to use. Yes. And, um, and we just go. And, some, and I do have a small SUV. So she sits back there comfortably and just sleeps. She loves traveling. So we do, it, it just depends on where we go. So I just thought of something. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use styling products in her hair? Oh yeah, well you know, <laughs> I have to use um, mousse on her t on the top of her head sometimes because her hair will go in her face, and that way it keeps it back. And it just depends. Like sometimes okay. uh, you know they'll want ponytails or whatever, and you know we kind of go from there. Yeah, because I figure with all that hair, you know, kind of like me, like we could just like style it and put some stuff in it, and mm -hmm. you know blow it dry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So did you have to get her used to, because uh, you know, the, the Afghans are just kind of iconic with always like the wind is blowing and the fans and stuff like that. So they're just like such naturals at that. Did you accustom to her uh, that as soon as you got her, like, you're going to be a star shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I knew from the beginning, I could just tell that it was in her, you know, you could just see that she was very trainable. You know, I took her through, beginning, you know, puppy training through advanced and we did all kinds of things, but um, yeah. And she loves the wind in her hair. So that didn't, that was just easy. I didn't have to worry about, you know, those wind machines and all that stuff. She just loves that. <laughs> oh, look, she, she's like, she's trying to tell you something. I know. She said, come on up, come on up. She says, I want to be in there too, mom. <laughs> Such a pretty girl. So I'll ask you one more question before I let you go. Sure. Um, 
some people have dogs and they can't just have just one of them. Is there anything on your radar that you might get like a second one? Or are you the kind of person who just like sticks to their one dog? I'm just curious. Well, right now we have um, a Husky mix and also a poodle at home. So we have our hands full. But um, in the future, I am considering getting another Afghan. So you never know. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like, you know, people that have like Jack Russell's or wiener dogs, next thing, you know, you know, they're surrounded by them. I have one friend, she has, she has like eight dachshunds, but they're just little dogs. So yeah, exactly. Have eight and, dachshunds. Yeah. And bigger too, I have to brush them. So it's like twice, twice the, you know, everything. So yeah. I, you'd, you'd have to hire help if you had that many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Well, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, Let's see if I have any more questions here. Well, let's just bring up a couple. How do you get her hair looking so perfect? Oh, if she drinks water. Oh, good question. Well, I have a little bowl and the bowl has like a little funnel on the top and I just squeeze it and it just lets out enough water so she could just drink it and it won't get her ears wet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's very smart. What's, what's the hood, the hood thing that they wear? Oh, the snood. Yeah. So the when she, for her meals, she has to wear the snood overhead. So it protects her, gets all her hair back and she won't get her hair wet. Yes. Those are very, I, I actually really like those things. So, all right. So how many of those does she own? <laughs> Probably about maybe six or seven of them. And I use like a couple of them for her food, you know, when she eats. And then we just keep a couple for styling and when we go out too, because it's like you said, it's pretty stylish too. They are. They're beautiful. That's one thing I love going to the uh, the dog shows because they have all those different ones. But, um, you know, I never had a dog that required owning one so I could only look. Uh, okay. So we got another couple of questions here. So let's see. Um, do you use any particular shampoo, detangler, gloss, anything that you recommend other Afghan people should like think about getting if they're, just got an Afghan. Um, actually, since I don't bathe her myself, um, it's the groomer who has her special, you know, products that she gotcha. has. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. So she's good to train with all the people. No, she is a very good girl, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And she, you know, I trained her from a puppy, just having the vacuum on, I take her everywhere. So she's used to all kinds of noises. Nothing really faces her anymore because you need that on set because the set could be really noisy. Yes, it absolutely can be a little bit crazy and a lot of lights. And mm -hmm. so how did she react the first time you had like strobe lights going off for uh, a photo shoot? Did that set her off at all? Did, was that something you had to work through or did she just took naturally to that? Um, she took naturally to that because we, um, with the first um, photographer that I worked with, um, her name was um, Ashley Clayton. Um, we did all kinds of little shoots and she did all kinds of things like that just to kind of get her acclimated. And oh, good. Uh, yeah, so it really worked out good, you know, strobe machines and the wind machines and all that kind of stuff. So I really credit her since she was the first one. Yeah, that's very helpful if you can put a little bit of, uh, you know, when there's not so much pressure to actually get the job done and prepare the dog for that or the cat for that kind of stuff. So very, very smart. Uh, so let's see. How much does she weigh now? Oh, she weighs uh, 52 pounds. So, oh. I mean, yeah, because they're all, you know, it's a all lot of hair. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. She's Definitely. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish you guys the best, especially here with COVID going on. Hopefully we will all uh, continue to, to get back to work here now that the fall is happening. Um, and because uh, I know we've all had a, a long summer just kind of keeping to ourselves and uh, trying to stay safe. And, you know, I know that the safety protocols on set, uh, you know, are definitely getting put in place and stuff like that. So, um, you know. Hopefully we can we can all work outside a little bit more because you're in LA, which is also kind of like Florida. Like now is the perfect time for doing shoots outside because before that it's just been a little bit too hot. Yeah. So how does she handle the heat? Um, Afghans, I guess that they were bred for for the heat, so mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to bother her too much. But I mean, I don't like to keep her out, you know, where it's hot. <laughs> I'm the one who doesn't like the heat. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm going to get over a hundred, but yeah, they're. Uh, some dogs just get really spoiled though. Like, the, they're like, no, we're going in now. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, but she's pretty good. She'll let me know. She lets me know how she's feeling. So it helps. Definitely. And does she swim at all? Some people, you know, are into like the whole dock dog diving and all that kind of stuff. I would never let an Afghan like get wet all the time because it would just be like, you know, wet dog smell all the time is what I'm saying. But um, does she like the water? Um, well, we have a pool and I trained her as a puppy just to walk around it because I didn't want her to, you know, go in the pool and come out. And then it's like a nightmare grooming <laughs> session. Right. So, so she's done. the night before the shoot she's, or the morning before the shoot. She's like, I'm going to take a quick dip. Yep, exactly. So I didn't want to take a chance of that happening. Yeah. Oh. So there's another tip for you guys. Be careful, you know, with your dog the night before a shoot. They get all beautiful. So she's just a gorgeous girl. And congratulations again on winning America's Top Dog here for uh, 2020. And, uh, you know, if you have any appearances or things going on, I hope that you'll, you know, share uh, with all of us at some point, you know, and we can keep track of you. So how do people find you online? So if um, they want to find you on Instagram or Facebook, what would they do? Um, well, she has an Instagram page. It's Shay underscore Afghan underscore hound. So that's one way. And she has a, um, she has a uh, web page, Afghan hound actor.com. So we have two different ways you can find us. Definitely. Yeah. Probably the easiest Afghan hound actor.com. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Good. So guys go follow Shay. She's a young dog. She's got lots and lots of things ahead of her and i'm excited to kind of see where life takes you both and i hope to meet you in person at some point you know i'll make it out to la i'd actually hope to be out there this year uh, around this time but it just you know obviously did not happen so we'll think positive about next year definitely <laughs> all right well thanks so much and i appreciate you spending some time with us and enjoy the rest of your day there with your beautiful girl Thank you. And you too. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So what a gorgeous dog, right? I mean, it's been a dream of mine to have one too. So I guess we'll see what happens in the next few years for me if I ever end up getting one. But um, but I hope to. Uh, I think they're just a, a beautiful, very sensitive breed. Uh, but again, you know, very high maintenance. So I probably would not have a dog like that unless maybe I had a partner in life, you know, who enjoyed grooming dogs <laughs> because it's definitely not my thing. And, uh, you know, I get a little sidetracked on other things that I want to do. So, you know, me having the little Fifi dog, uh, Maltese is enough of a challenge to think about brushing. All right. So, I am going to get out of here and I really appreciate you guys hanging out um, with me on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And I will see you back here next week at three o'clock. And I have a really cool guest, uh, but I can't say who it is yet. I'm kind of like confirming things. Uh, but I'm going to tell you that on the 17th of September, so two weeks from now, I'm going to be hanging out with Sarah Carson of the Super Collies. So that's going to be a really fun interview. So between now and then, if you have any questions that you would love for me to ask Sarah, uh, please reach out. Let me know. You can direct message me on Instagram. You can reach out here on Facebook, um, whatever. I'm happy to hear from you and, and uh, get your questions answered with her. So it's going to be really fun. Um, all right. I'm going to have uh, uh, be back here next week. And I hope that you guys, if you like this kind of stuff, that you'll consider, if you're not already part of my uh, community here on Facebook, I hope you'll com you know, consider joining us and uh, get in the group. And it's a great uh, place to actually post your videos and photos and a great place for us to kind of get to know each other. Uh, my phone is starting to ring more and uh, getting some animals back to work. So I'd love to be able to put you to work, hopefully. So. Thank you again for, for hanging out and enjoy the rest of this wonderful weekend. Okay. Bye guys. I will see you next week. Okay. And.